Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing how we write chemical formulae. So thinking about, okay, what do we as chemists mean by a chemical formula? Um, revisiting the concept of um, element symbols, um, and then looking at um, some of the, 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 the tips or the, the ways that chemists will actually put a formula together. Okay, so thinking of a chemistry um, is something that has its own language. So a field of science that really that, that we're thinking about different chemicals, we're thinking about different elements, and we need to develop the, a language that allows us to talk about them in a universal way, so that people across the globe can um, be talking about the same substance, that we can minimise the chance of getting confused. And the and chemical formulae, uh, you know, which is the plural of the word formula, um, allow us to do that. And so um, one of the things that we need to remind ourselves about um, before we can construct a chemical formula, is the concept of element symbols. Okay, so remember, so that there are short, we've looked at this before, you've looked at this several times over the last, um, you know, couple of years, but the idea that they're a shorthand way to represent um, elements. And, and so we get um, different types of kind of symbols. So we've got, so they're mainly one or two letters, um, that they will always be one or two letters for ones that have been officially recognized. Um, and so, now what we have, we've got some symbols that are just um, one letter, which is the start. So these are some examples I'll go through. So just the first letter of their name. So H for hydrogen, U for uranium, C for carbon. Okay. All right. So first letter. And then we get other ones where we have um, two letters. So we get one uppercase letter and one lowercase letter. And the reason that we would have those is um, because we have... And, you know, um, 118 elements, but we've only got 26 letters of the alphabet. And so we need, if we're just going to use single letters, we're going to run out pretty quickly. And so um, we will often have elements that have start with the same letter in their name, but we need to be able to distinguish calcium, chromium, chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, you know, all of these ones that start with C, you know, in the same way we need to distinguish, you know, arsenic from um, startine from argon and, and bromine from beryllium from barium. Okay, and so we add a second letter, which is typically the second letter of their name or perhaps the second um, sound in their name, like in chromium and chlorine. Okay, um, they both start with CH, but that's a one sound in Greek, so R and L is the second sound. Okay, and then we get to other ones where which are more complicated, um, where their symbol doesn't seem to have any bearing or relationship to their name. Okay, and so we get um, N, A, C, U, P, B, W, A, U, and K. But this is for sodium, copper, lead, tungsten, gold, and potassium, respectively. And part of the reason for that is that the names that we currently have for these elements is not always well they were known. Sodium used to be known as natrum. Um, copper used to be known as cuprum, or lead for plumbum, where we get plumbing from. Okay, um, that these different that these symbols that we established earlier on for how they were used to be known, and then we've revised the name um, over time, and but the symbol has stuck, and so that we just have to be aware that that um, you know that those are are ones that don't seem to match, and we need to to keep an eye out for them. Okay, so now we have a look at what we mean by like looking at a chemical formula. Okay, so I'm going to take the example of H2O, something that's very familiar to us for water. Okay, so it has the symbols um, which tell us which elements there are, and it also has numbers which tell us the ratio of elements like how many elements of this to how many elements of that and so on. Okay, so we've got H and O to tell us that we have oxygen and hydrogen, H and O for H for hydrogen, O for oxygen. And we also have a two that tells us we have two hydrogens and one oxygen in every one water. Okay, um, so I, I didn't write this as O, I wrote it as oxygen because my O and my zero are gonna look a little bit um, similar, so I, I didn't want to confuse you there. Okay, so that the numbers that we have here tell us the ratio of, of how many of each element is in the formula that represents that substance. Okay, and that these numbers 
this number that specifically that we're talking about is called a subscript. Sub being below, script being writing. It's a number that's written slightly down lower than everything else. Okay, and so that this number, this subscript, tells us how much of that, that element is present in that formula. Okay, so the idea, so subscripts, the subscripts tell us the number of atoms of a, that given element that are present in the compound or in that substance. And they come after the element they refer to. Okay, so that's a, an important one to be able to distinguish. So the two here refers to the hydrogen and not the oxygen. Okay, which is, this is why I picked this example because it's sandwiched between elements. If it's like carbon dioxide, it's more straightforward. You can kind of say, well, the two is at the end here. It can't relate to that. But so the idea with this is that the two, so that the, the subscript comes after the element they refer to and they cannot be arbitrarily changed. Um, so, oh, I've just written it, but I realise it's just gone off the screen for you. Okay, but so this idea of the, the, the two in water, we can't just all of a sudden decide, well, actually, I think water might better be, be better off as H3O, or maybe as HO, or HO2. Okay, that we can't, they're decided by what we've measured about that compound in nature, and we can't just decide to change it. Okay, so that they can't be changed. Okay, what we'll see a little bit later on when we look at symbol equations is that there are other numbers in chemical equations that we can change that represent something different. Okay, so that's so we looked at what looking at an example of a formula, we looked at um, subscripts and the symbols. Okay, and now we're going to look at an extra dimension. So let's say I'm going to talk about the compound methane, and I'm told that methane has contains one carbon and four hydrogens. Okay, so I'm told that that's what the compound is like and what elements are in there and how many there are. So the first thing that I need to decide is, or, you know, what are the symbols that I'm going to be using in my formula? So looking at the elements I have, looking up their symbols and writing them down. Okay, so for carbon, I'm going to have a capital C and for hydrogen, a capital H. So these are some of them you'll remember, others you might need to look at the periodic table to remind you. Okay, so it's always good to have one of those handy. Okay, um, and now we need to look at how many I have of each. Okay, so for carbons, I'm told I've got one. Okay, looking at my information and my hydrogens, I'm told I have four. Okay, so I'm going to have a C and an H and I'm going to have a one and a four in there somewhere. And now I'm going to look at subscripts to my formula. Okay, so putting subscripts in. So I've got, I'm going to write, I've got a carbon. Um, actually, I'll push this up here a bit. <clears throat> okay, so I've got carbon. Um, I've Now, because I've only got one, I don't need to put a one down the bottom here. So then I can write the next one of hydrogen, which is capital H. And then I put can put a subscript of four to show that I have four hydrogens in that compound. And there we go. I've written the chemical formula for methane. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.